Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of Mark 141. I will be thou clean. The whole verse says, Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. So let's go up here. Um, so there is a little bit of context in the above verses. Let's go up here. We'll go right here. Jesus preaches in Galilee, verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. One of Jesus' favorite times was early in the morning when it was still dark. Because this happens a lot, even on the resurrection. It was super early in the morning that he rose. Because they were all trying to get there right as the sun was coming up. Because that was when the Sabbath was over and they were allowed to go and, at sun up. And of course they had a call out. When they could see the sun starting to rise, they would call out. And so everybody could go and start moving around and doing what they wanted to do. We have the accounts of that where the women were carrying stuff. So that it was after the Sabbath they were allowed to carry stuff. They were going to go anoint the body. Jesus was up long before that time. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Jesus cleanses a leper. Now, here's, here's where we get to the core of what we're talking about here. So now we know where they're preaching. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you were willing, you can make me clean. So he had faith, but he likes, he, for some reason, he felt like he needed to use the word if. He should have already known. It, this may have been a test. He may have been testing Jesus. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I'm willing to be cleansed. <clears throat> you don't need to ask if I'm willing. You already know I'm willing. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. So he was, he was supposed to do it the way it was normally done as a testimony back to the people who made those things. A testimony to Moses and those laws. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely. He didn't keep quiet like Jesus told him to and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside in deserted places and they came to him from every direction. It messed up what Jesus was doing. And this is our way. We always mess it up as human beings. We always mess it up. But notice Jesus was more than willing. People think that he's not willing. Oh, he can't save me. Oh, he won't save me. Oh, no, actually, that's the whole purpose. I've had these conversations. Oh, Jesus, he, he, oh, he ain't going to save nobody like me. I, I told him, no, that's the whole purpose of what he's doing is to save you. The whole purpose of why I'm talking to you about this is, to, is that you get saved. So, of course, he will. Primeval darkness heard the almighty fiat, light be. Or, in our more modern uh, understanding, let there be light. And straightway, light was. And the word of the Lord Jesus is equal in majesty to that ancient word of power. The funny thing is, it's the same word. <laughs> he is that word because he is light. He is the light. Redemption, like creation, has its word of might. Jesus speaks, and it is done. Leprosy yielded to no human remedies, but it fled at once at the Lord's, I will. The disease exhibited no hopeful signs or tokens of recovery. Nature contributed nothing to its own healing, but the unaided word affected the entire work on the spot and forever. God spoke the world into existence. By a thought he can change it, remove it, rearrange it. We don't stop and consider the power that there is in that. Light be. And the light was. Amazing. 
See, there's so much more we don't know. There's so much more infinite to the God, to our God that we don't know. It just, it just, his power is beyond imagining. The sinner is in a plight more miserable than the leper. Let him imitate his example and go to Jesus, beseeching him and kneeling down to him. Let him exercise what little faith he has, even though it should go no further than, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And there need be no doubt as to the result of the application. You want to be saved? Ask him. Don't ask him, Lord, if, if you're willing. We know he's willing. If you're listening to this because someone shared it with you because they're, they are they they want you to be saved too. They want you to know the truth. You want to be saved? Ask him. Lord, would you save me? Of course he will. Of course he will. That's the whole goal. God desires all men be saved. Jesus heals all who come and casts out none. The, the, the word says that all who come to me, I will in no wise cast out. In reading the narrative in which our morning's text occurs, it is worthy to devote notice that Jesus touched the leper. The unclean person had broken through the regulations of the ceremonial law and pressed into the house. But Jesus, so far from chiding him, broke through the law himself in order to meet him. Because the law put a separation between the lepers and everyone. <laughs> He made an interchange with the leper, for while he cleansed him, he contracted, by that touch, a Levitical defilement. In the law, if you touch a leper, you are defiled. Jesus did that. A lot of people don't realize that. They don't pay attention to that. We don't know about those, these things nowadays. But he touched the leper, and that made him defiled. Just like he touched our sin. And he was sinless. Even so, Jesus Christ was made sin for us, although in himself he knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You can never forget those last two words, in him. Oh, that poor sinners would go to Jesus, believing in the power of his blessed substitutionary work, and they would soon learn the power of his gracious touch, that hand which multiplied the loaves, which saved sinking Peter, which upholds afflicted saints, which crowns believers, that same hand will touch every seeking sinner and in a moment make him clean. The love of Jesus is the source of salvation. He loves, he looks, he touches us, we live. Always remember and remind yourself, we didn't go to him for salvation. He came to us to give us salvation. We didn't go to him for anything. He came to us for all things. He came to the earth, born as a human, fulfilled the law, died and paid the debt, satisfying the wrath of God, and then rose, putting all things in his control, all things under his authority. What an amazing thing to know that none of it had anything to do with us. It was all him because he's the one that came to provide this gift, to offer this gift, to place this gift before us. <coughs> Every one of us has a room, a little room inside of us. And I'm speaking metaphorically. And in that room is two chairs and a little table. On that table is a gift. A great majority of people will never enter that room. See, the Lord is sitting at that table in one of those chairs. The other chair is for you. The gift is salvation, eternal life, eternity in heaven. But you have to open it. When it says Jesus knocks at the door, we always imagine he's on the outside of the door knocking to get in. I imagine him, he's already in that room knocking on the door, inviting us in. But how many people don't listen to that knock? 
Salvation is offered to all men. The debt of sin has been paid for all men. Salvation is there. The gift is there for everybody if they would but receive it. Sadly, there's many that won't ever open that box. They won't ever receive that gift. They won't ever sit at that table with Jesus and reason these things out. See, he came to us. We didn't go to him. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing to be clean in our Lord Jesus Christ. The noise you hear is a chainsaw, by the way. We've all lost a lot of limbs. We had to pull one out of a tree yesterday. Big one. I had to use my truck to get it out. It's an amazing thing to be clean in Jesus, to, to be born again, and to know that it had nothing to do with us. It had everything to do with him because he's the one that came to us. He seeks out each and every one of us. And the, notice the lost lamb didn't come to him. He went and got the lost lamb. Amazing. How many of us were lost and he found us? All of us. How many of us were destined for hell and he found us? All of us. How many of us didn't have any direction? And he gave him and gave us a direction, set us a path before us, and is leading us down that path, down that narrow path to the gate of salvation, which is him. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. I thank you that it's so simple. It's so simple that anybody can understand it, that, that you didn't make this word uh, a special word that can only be understood by those who are specifically trained in it, but that any person, any layman, I, I've known people with Down syndrome that understand the Bible, that anyone, literally anyone, even if they're illiterate, some of the greatest voices over the past 2,000 years have been illiterate men and women who have spoken your word. That You make it so simple anybody can understand. And that the world today makes it out like you have to have some kind of special training. Why? Well, you can't understand the Bible. you got to go to seminary first. I don't want to go anywhere near a seminary after seeing what they teach. I'd rather let the Holy Spirit teach me, like uh, Paul told Timothy. You don't have need anyone teach you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. Read the word. It's so simple. You made it so simple, and yet we make it so complicated. Oh, it can't be that easy. There must be more to it. Well, since I can't find more, I'll just invent more. And that's what they do. And Lord, they insult you and your word, trampling it underfoot, as it were, by going out of their way and avoiding the simplicity that is Christ, the simplicity that is the gospel. And in doing so, bar so many from entering in now. Luckily, you'll give them another opportunity. But how many more people would believe if the door was that much clearer to find and people would stop trying to complicate something that you didn't complicate? We're in a terrible state today as a church goes, but... I'm lucky you have awakened us. Those of us who would hear, those of us who want to be ready, those of us who you chose, those of us who believe, you woke us up. And we see, and we're trying to share it. And it's getting hard to share, Lord. It's really getting hard to share this with people. I mean, a lot. some of it is us. A lot of it is the rest of the world. They just don't want to hear it. As soon as you start speaking, they shut off. Their mind closes down and they're looking for a way out, an excuse to leave. What a terrible thing. What a terrible thing. I wish we could all be brothers and sisters like we were meant to be. Under your banner, under your name. 
wish we could all be loving and caring brothers and sisters, not attacking each other like we get constantly, not trying to bring something negative down and then misinterpreting or even deliberately mis being disingenuous about what the certain scriptures mean to prove a point and to be right instead of just admitting we don't know. What a horrible thing, a terrible thing. I wish it was different. Well, Lord, you're going to make it different. There's a day coming when you are going to make things better. Justice will reign supreme. Truth will be the rule of the day. Peace and love and joy will be constant companions. And all will believe. All will believe. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. The Lord came to us. Don't think for one second it had anything to do with you. It didn't. It, it can't. It had everything to do with him. He made all the effort. He created us. He set things in order, directed the paths, brought men up to speak to the world, laid down the law, then came and fulfilled the law for us since we couldn't do it. And then died for us and paid the debt we owed. The debt that had accrued during that time. That we might be saved. That we might be the righteousness, righteousness of God in Christ. Remember, it has to be in Christ. It always has to be in Christ. Two little words. Seriously high level of meaning. And then we will be free. If you're having a hard time, it's no wonder the rest of us are too. If you're struggling, it's no wonder the rest of us are too. These are dark times. These are hard times. But then again, these are also glorious times. We have the more sure word, easily able to refute any false doctrine. We merely need to go and read it. Now, that doesn't mean people are going to believe us. We can prove them wrong, but they won't. They still won't believe us. But the fact that we have the ability to do it is amazing to me. They have no recourse. They either have to openly and knowingly lie to be right, or they must accept the word as it says and speaks and, and the truth that it is. They, they, they have no choice. So if they don't, I find it incredible. I find it encouraging that it's so easy. But I think for many people, that's the hardest thing, is that it's so easy. They just can't believe it's that easy. It's that easy. Believe and you shall be saved. The Lord made it like that on purpose, so that any and all could come into the salvation of the Lord. Sadly, just a lot just won't. It just won't. It is what it is. There's nothing we can do to change it except to share the gospel, share the truth of the word with everyone we can, and in the, at the same time, give our testimony, but also be a living testimony of the Lord in our lives. And let the others see it. That, in and of itself, has great power all on its own. Us being a living testimony has incredible power. Live for the Lord. Live for the Lord and watch the world around you change. And when they see your good works, like the Bible says, they will glorify God in heaven. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.